In this edition of Impact, we look at how some elementary school students take a hands-on approach to studying ancient artifacts. If you can get young students excited about the idea of history, make it real to them, give them something interesting and tangible to hang things that they see in, in textbooks that might not be so vivid, they're going to have a totally different trajectory in relating to all of the history lessons that they get from then on. But first, we illuminate an art form that makes a modern city glow. From a very young age, I really liked looking at neon tubes, especially tubes where you can actually look at the discharge. Because what you're looking at is you're looking at plasma. You're basically looking at fire inside the tube. And so that's, so it's kind of exciting in a very primal level. The University of Southern California. 33,000 students from 115 countries. And home to one of America's leading journalism schools presents. Impacts a student-produced series from USC's Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. This is Amy. Welcome to the first episode of Impact in High Definition. I'm Lauren Lee. We're excited about the new look for our show, so we found a fun and visual story for our first segment. We explore an art form that lit up Los Angeles, neon signs. You'll get a close-up look at delicate glass tubes with twists, turns, and color, and see what some people are doing to keep this slice of history alive. I start on the table by measuring. Now I've marked where the first bend's going to be, and now I'm ready to bend. So what I'm doing now is I'm just heating the glass very evenly. I'm going to get the glass up to about 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit. My name is Michael Fleckner, and I'm an artist, and I work in neon. Neon is not considered a typical medium for artists. For Fleckner, his interest began the way most of us experience the phenomenon. I was always fascinated with neon signs and things I'd see in windows. And when I went off to art school, this artist came to lecture us, and he was showing us slides of his artwork, which is all created out of neon, and the light kind of went on for me that, you know, that I could use neon as a expressive medium. In his first works with neon, Fleckner gave drawings to a skilled bender who would make the piece for him. But after a visit to Los Angeles and the Museum of Neon Art, he decided to learn the craft. He spent six weeks learning the basics of bending in his home state, and then he went back to Los Angeles. I moved out to Los Angeles, you know, with like 50 bucks in my pocket and a van full of my stuff and uh, started looking for a, a job and nobody would hire me because I wasn't experienced. And they said, well, come back when you're experienced. And this one guy took a chance on me. He said, I see something in your bending that I think you'll be a good bender. And so he hired me and I worked with him for about three years. And it, what was really nice about working for this guy is in the evenings, he'd let me work on my own artwork. Yeah, during the day, I'd be bending up signs, open signs, palm trees, you know, pizza signs and stuff like that. But at night, I got to work on my own art, so it was a nice arrangement. As it turns out, Los Angeles was the place to be. Filled with historic signs, the city has its own special relationship with neon. During the day, these neon signs are off. You would never even know that they exist. But at night, they pop on, and it's just a huge reason to stop here. Eric Linksweiler is a neon enthusiast. I, anyway, brilliant. thank you for this. You're doing a great job. Oh, thank you. And leads the Neon Cruise, a weekly tour put on by the Museum of Neon Art. He is one of Los Angeles' leading neon historians. Well, a lot of people don't realize that Los Angeles is where neon got its start. The first neon lamp was invented in the early 1900s by George Claude in Paris, France. In 1923, Earl C. Anthony bought two neon signs for his Packard dealership in Los Angeles. These were the first neon signs in the U.S. 
you had these neon signs shipped from Paris, France, flipped a switch and they literally stopped traffic. No one had ever seen the crisp, clean glow of a neon sign before, and people just flocked to go see that color. Car dealerships, churches, even funeral homes had neon signs. People were, and still are, attracted to that mysterious glow. There's two major gases or gas combinations that we use, and neon's the one, and neon always gives you that, that bright red-orange color. And the other combination is the argon gas with a drop of mercury, and that gives you blue. And we'll weld on the final electrode. Once the tube is finished, a drop of mercury is inserted. It will react with the argon gas. The tubes then have to go through a process called bombarding. What bombarding does is it heats the tube, because we've got to get the tube hot, basically, to sterilize it. Because once we put the noble gas in it, we don't want any sort of impurity in the tube. So by bombarding the tube, we get a long life out of the tube. Electricity is sent through the tube, actually lighting the air inside it. When the tube reaches 500 degrees Fahrenheit, the bombarder is turned off and the tube cools to room temperature. A vacuum has also been created in the tube and it is ready for gas. And now I'll put the gas in it and I'll watch that pressure change right here. I'm gonna hit it now. That's the right color. And now I'll seal it off. As soon as this glass heats up, it'll suck down and close. It'll seal on itself. The great thing about neon is this process is universal. Any skilled bender can repair any neon sign, a fact that comes in handy when considering LA's historic signs. The 20s and 30s saw a neon explosion until history took the glow out of the gas. The mayor of Los Angeles declared a blackout during World War II because the city was afraid of a Japanese attack from the Pacific. Those neon signs were turned off and many were not turned on again until decades later, if they survived the war at all. That is, until Al Nodal came along. And when I came to LA, I just discovered these signs and, and I really wanted to do something about the, the history of the city. In the 1980s, as executive director of the Department of Cultural Affairs, Nodal went on a mission to relight L.A.'s neon. You know, it, it, it does show off a very, very beautiful part of the history of L.A. Overall, we've done 125 signs around the city. After some time, the program slowed down and some of those save signs have gone dark again, mostly due to lack of maintenance. But the goal of saving signs has not been lost. I work with the Museum of Neon Art. I've been with the museum for about 11 years and I save neon signs. I think that the best example of saving a neon sign is right behind me. You're looking at the Sunset Palms over my shoulder. Sunset Palms was the name of a hotel. Linksweiler saved the sign from the trash during a remodel. I offered the neon sign to the Museum of Neon Art, but they didn't want it. So off to Grandma's storage shed it went, and I kept it there for a long, long time until I finally got a wall big enough to display the whole thing. If a sign can't stay alive on a building or a savior's wall, the best are restored here at the Museum of Neon Art. Since the early 80s, Mona has housed everything neon. Restorations and recreations live here at the museum, where they can glow brightly as they were intended to be seen. Artists like Fleckner do much of the restoration work. And what we're doing with the burn-in transformer is basically we want to see if the gas is, uh, the gas is lighting the color it's supposed to light. In this case, it'll be a pale blue. Yep. And what we're seeing is a pretty consistent gas color throughout. Here's the actual color of argon gas without any mercury in it. Yeah, the mercury's still sitting in the little trap right there. And by dumping the mercury in it, what it'll do is it'll brighten the tube up um, dramatically. So it's right up there. And I'll tip it. And the mercury is right there now. Once the mercury is in the tube, the trap has to be cut off. The final work is taken back to the transformer to heat up the gas to its full potential. Mercury's probably right there. And you can see that it's gotten a little bit brighter. 
And as the mercury vaporizes, the brightness of the whole tube will come up. From a very young age, I really liked looking at a neon tube, especially tubes where you can actually look at the discharge. Because what you're looking at is you're looking at plasma. You're basically looking at fire inside the tube. And so that's so it's kind of exciting in a very primal level. That's what you're looking at, and you can actually see a little bit of movement and stuff. And then the craft, and I really enjoy the craft. You're working with material that uh, is very, very brittle and hard, you know, at, at room temperature. But when you get it hot, you can start to move it and manipulate it, you know, any way you want to. So, and then once it cools back down, it stays wherever you it stays wherever you put it. So neon itself is, is just a very compelling phenomenon. But then the crafting of it, the fabricating of it, is also very satisfying. And this tube won't get very, it doesn't get hot. Neon tubes don't get hot. So I'm going to leave it right there in the O for a while. Yeah, so as it vaporizes, the argon that's in that little spot will turn to basically electric blue. So that's it, basically, we just wait. Usually this will come up in color, you know, in about a half an hour. Is it safe? Yeah, so this is the completed neon sign, and it's at its full brightness now, which means that the mercury has vaporized and has moved throughout the tube, so we have a nice consistent brightness. So the next thing we would do is paint out all these crossovers, so you want to see the connections between the letters. And then this would be mounted onto some sort of surface, you know, if you're going to mount it um, like on a plexiglass background, or if it was going to go on a wall, you would mount it on a wall using a series of tube supports, just put little glass stands. Or you could build a glass frame around it, hang it in a window. You know, there's just lots of different ways of, uh, of uh, mounting or installing a neon sign.